Okay, so we're going to have a go at solving a nice little geometry problem here. I think this is quite an interesting one to look at because there are so many different approaches, so many different ways that we could have a go at solving this. So basically our setup is we've got the graph of y is the absolute value of x here on the left. We've also got the graph of y equals 2 minus the absolute value of x minus 4. And finally we've got a horizontal line at height c, the line y equals c, which cuts through both of these in such a way that our blue area, so the area bounded between our line and our first function, this is twice as big as the red area bounded between our line and the second function. So I'm going to share two different ways of solving this, so I'll get started on the first one, but do have a go by yourself if you like. So basically for the first approach I'm going to try and find an expression for each of the areas and then solve them using algebra to find a suitable value of c. So our blue area, let's just have a think about what this triangle looks like. We'll go down the base times height divided by 2 formula to find the area of the triangle. So what is the height of this triangle? Well, it's where it meets the line y equals c, so the height of this triangle is actually just c. Now, if we want to find the width of the triangle, all we need to do is think, well, we've got the graph of the absolute value of x here, which forms a 90 degree angle, and this gives us a nice isosceles triangle here. But not only that, but if we split it up into two smaller triangles, we've also got two identical triangles here. So the height of this is actually the same as the width of half of our triangle, which is telling us then that the width of this triangle is 2c. So what does this tell us? Well, we call it a1 is our blue area, this is a half times the base 2c times c, or c squared. So that's a nice expression just for our first area for the blue area. You could also see this because you could imagine moving this triangle over here, and then we have a square of side length c. So you can see the area is c squared for our first area. So now what about the red area? Well, let's draw the triangle again, and you can see it's still basically an inverted modulus function, so we still get the nice 90 degree angle here, it's still an isosceles triangle, which can be split into two smaller isosceles triangles. And let's think about what the height of the triangle is, and then we'll work out what the width is at the bottom. So the height of the triangle, we start off at this point at the top, of our function. So let's think, what is the maximum point of this function, y equals 2 minus absolute value of x minus 4? Well, we've got 2 minus something that's non-negative, so the maximum value this can take is 2. So our height here, at the very top we're at 2, and then how far down do we go? We go down to the line y equals c. So the height of this triangle is going to be 2 minus c. Start off at height 2, go down to height c. So the distance you travel is 2 minus c. And then you can see here the width, just like before, is going to be 2 times 2 minus c, or 4 minus 2c. So this tells us, just like before, you could turn this into a square of side length 2 minus c, and you can see that a2 is going to be 2 minus c all squared. Or you could also do half times base times height, you would get the same thing. So what I'll do now is I'll clear the board, and then we'll just do the calculations. Basically we want to set this one equal to 2 times the second area, and then we can find the value of c. So we'll set c squared equal to 2 into 2 minus c all squared. Then if we expand the right hand side and multiply by this 2, we'll get 8 minus 8c plus 2c squared. Take away c squared from both sides, we get 8 minus 8c plus c squared is equal to 0. Then we can solve this using the quadratic formula. We'll see that c is going to be equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, so 64 minus 4 times 8 all divided by 2. Then we should get two solutions here when we calculate this. We get 4 plus or minus 2 root 2 in the end for our values of c. But if you think about the initial geometric problem, are both of these solutions going to be valid? Well, let's think about the values that c can take here, because it does need to intersect both of these graphs. So c certainly has to be greater than 0, but in order to intersect this one on the right hand side, c actually has to be less than 2. So this rules out one of our possibilities then we can conclude that c has to be equal to 4 minus 2 root 2, which you can verify is between 0 and 2. So now we'll finish by solving the problem in a slightly different way, and I think this method is even nicer than the first method I shared. So basically this relies on spotting that our red triangle and our blue triangle here, these are actually similar triangles, they've got all the same angles, one's just an enlargement of the other. And you know as well that the area scale factor for your enlargement, your area scale factor, is 2. 
So what does that tell you? Well, your linear scale factor, so the actual scale factor of your enlargement, is going to be the square root of this. So your linear scale factor is 2. So all of your lengths in the triangle, the height, the width, these are all root 2 times bigger in the blue triangle than they are in the red triangle. So this is really useful because we know what the height of the blue triangle is and we know what the height of the red triangle is in terms of c. So we know that the height of the blue triangle is just c and we know that this is root 2 times as big as the height of the red triangle which is 2 minus c. So c is equal to root 2 times 2 minus c. Just saying that this height is root 2 times bigger. So now if we multiply by root 2 we end up with 2 root 2 minus root 2 c. You see we're going to get a nice linear equation to solve. If I take the root 2c onto the right, left hand side, get 1 plus root 2c is equal to 2 root 2, then divide both sides by 1 plus root 2, we've got 2 root 2 over 1 plus root 2. Let's rationalise the denominator. I'll do this by multiplying by root 2 minus 1, so that we just get in the denominator now root 2 squared minus 1 squared just gives us 1, so the denominator completely disappears here then our numerator is going to be 2 root 2 multiplied by root 2 minus 1. And finally, when we expand the brackets here, 2 root 2 times 2 gives us 4, and then minus a 2 root 2. So this shows that c is equal to 4 minus 2 root 2. I think this method is slightly nicer because we're only solving a linear equation here, but then you do have to spot that we've got the area scale factor, you've got to spot that they're similar triangles, and then you've got to work out the linear scale factor.